they started, uh, it's given me uh, a good opportunity to get to know some guys my age and really plug in with a group of people uh, that are leading me closer to Christ. They're helping me in ways of accountability and discipleship and uh, all that good stuff. And so I have really enjoyed it and I think it's been super beneficial for me so far. That set time each week that you can meet with them, girls your own age, people your own age, and you can just share life together. You can go through your struggles, go through your joys in life. And whatever it is, those people are going to be there for you. And you know that you can go to them with anything. It changed my life. That's the main point. It has encouraged me to come to grow stronger in my walk with God and my faith. You know, it's just good to be in deeper because you can express your personal difficulties and your struggles and temptations. And as you express them, you get closer to everybody else. It becomes easier to fight them and build walls and defeat them in the community to us. They've been such a blessing in my life, and I honestly learned that I probably learned more from them than they learned from me just about the gospel and just uh, these guys' knowledge about the Bible and, uh, you know, what the Lord has taught them throughout their lives. It's just really been a blessing to me and encouraged me just to dig deeper and, and become stronger in my faith, and I love these guys, and we just do life together. At first, it does seem like a little time-consuming, but it really helps you through your struggles and your daily life and your spiritual walk and everything, and I feel like once you start, it's a lot easier to continue with it, and it makes you a better person, and it helps you, and it helps other people in your group when you're committed to actually helping you come on a daily basis. Brad, being like the age that he is, and having gone through like everything we're going through this time in our life, um, he's just a great person to relate to and talk to about anything you're going through, and um, just like another family man, and just. Another guy that you can hold yourself accountable with. You definitely, definitely get into the group. You guys, it's like a smaller setting, smaller scale, so it's not as intimidating as like a small group, I guess, would be. So definitely get into the group. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all give it up for me. Okay. I still think that Cameron's still stunned that Brad hit him on the leg. <laughs> that was good, right? D groups, what I like to call circles. And the biggest thing that I want to tell you guys tonight, it is because of a circle that I am who I am today. It's because of a circle. 
It's because of a discipleship group. It's because of a small group. It's because of a Sunday school class. The reason why I am who I am today, the disciple of Jesus that I am today, it is because of a circle. A circle changed my life. And some of you haven't been to a live in a while and you're wondering what in the world am I talking about when I talk about a circle. And I'll elaborate on that in a second. But a circle changed my life. And what I mean by that is a circle changed my life when I got in a circle with a group of guys who were passionately pursuing Jesus with everything. They were all in. My life changed drastically. I'll show you a picture of a group of guys. Here's some of them. Y'all recognize me in that picture? Y'all recognize me in that picture? Y'all recognize which one I am, the second one? Do y'all like the curly hair or no? No. The goatee. I mean, what is going on right now, right? But here is a picture of my senior year of a circle that I was a part of for seven years of my life. That my life was drastically changed and shaped to the likeness of Jesus because of a circle of a group of guys that I did life with 24-7. And I believe with all my heart that you guys can be all in disciples, but I believe that happens in the context of a circle and not a row. Because what you guys are sitting in right now is a row. If you guys are truly going to be all that you can be in Jesus, that is going to happen in a circle. So many of you have heard me say this before, but I'm going to say it again. Circles are what? Circles are greater than rows. Some of y'all can't see that. My marker's out. Let's see if I can put it in red. Did I hit anybody? Did I hit you? I tried to hit Cameron and wake him up again. Let's see if this one works. This one's not too much greater. No pun intended, right? Can y'all see that a little bit? Yeah. I'll trash that one too. Should make sure the markers work first, right? Circles are greater than rows. If you truly want to see your life transform like never before, I want to encourage you with everything to get in a circle, to get in a discipleship group. Because you can attend, you can come and sit in a row all that you want, and you can hear me preach almost 52 messages a year. But if you truly want to have your life transformed, I really believe it's going to happen in the context of a circle. You want to know where the church gets their strength from? I really believe the church gets their strength from people being in circles, people being in discipleship. That's where I truly believe that's where it happens. If you guys want to be all in, all in, if you want to pursue Jesus with everything, you need a group of friends. You need a circle of friends who are going to hold you accountable, who are going to encourage you along the way, who are going to support you along the way to follow Jesus. And you're going to need a leader besides myself who's going to love you and care about you, who's going to make sure that you are trying to follow Jesus with everything in you. Because, yes, a student pastor had a huge influence on my life. If you want to know who had a... One of the, maybe even a bigger influence in my life. This guy that I used to call Mr. Randy, and I want to show you a picture of him. Go back to that picture for me. He's the top left-hand corner. The top left-hand corner is a guy that I call Mr. Randy. 
who was my discipleship group leader, my Sunday school teacher who transformed my life. The top right hand corner is a picture of a coach. Coaches have a huge influence in your life because that's almost like a circle. You're on a team. And the bottom people are two student pastors that I had in my student ministry time. I got a chance to see them about two or three years ago. And I just had to thank him with everything that I am who I am today because of a circle that I was in that he taught, that he loved me, he cared about me. Because if you're a discipleship group leader here tonight, can you stand for me? you stand? See, I get a chance to stand 24-7 and preach God's word for you guys every single week. But the people who are standing right now are the true heroes. Because it's impossible for me to get up close with you guys. You can remain standing. It's impossible, all right? It's impossible for me to get up close with each and every one of you guys and know you guys intimately like I really want to. But here are leaders all across this room that are dedicated to loving you guys and caring for you. And they sacrifice not only a lot of them their Wednesday nights, they sacrifice Sunday mornings, Sunday afternoons, whenever your discipleship group meets. But they love you, and I believe with all my heart they're the true heroes because they do life with you 24-7. And that's something that I can't do with each and every one of you. And sometimes you might get mad and you're like, I want Hux to know me like better. I'm sorry. It's just not realistic. I'm going to know you as best as I possibly can know you. I want to know your name. I want to know things about you. I want to see you at sporting events. But the person who's going to get up close with you is going to know you more than anything, going to care about you, who's personally going to text you each and every week, who's going to make sure that you're following Jesus with everything, is these people standing in this room tonight, right now. So as they have a seat, can y'all give them a hand one more time? <laughs> what I really want to see, yes, it's important to attend Wednesday nights, but we just don't want to see attendance. We want to see attachment. We don't just want to see attendance. We want to see attachment because does a row attach? It just keeps going, right? But a circle attaches. We don't just want to see attendance. We want to see attachment. We want to see you be attached to the local body, the local church. We want to see you. We just don't want attendees. We want circles of family. Some of you are like, I don't feel like family. Like, alive is so big. If you want to feel like a family, like get in a discipleship group and you'll begin to know people more and more. Because I know it's difficult to come on a Wednesday night and get a chance to know everyone. That's the reason why we do something small like a discipleship group. We do a live groups at the end of a live. But circles are so important. But sometimes we run away from circles because we don't want to want people to know our struggles. But we can let people know our victories too. But we need people that when we get defeated, when we get down, we have a circle of people who are there to pick us back up. To say keep going, don't give up. Hey, I love you. I'm care I care about you. You need a circle like no other. So tonight, remember, circles are greater than rows. If you have your Bibles tonight, turn with me to the book of Acts. Go to Acts with me. Where the church all started was in the book of Acts. I'll tell you guys this. I really believe it. That when you're not in a circle, when you're not in a small group, it's like a child trying to live without his family. When you're not attached to a circle, when you're not in a discipleship group, it's like a child trying to live without his family. When you come to know Jesus, you come into the family of God. And when you try to live without a circle in your life, it's like you're trying to live without your family. And there's brothers and sisters who care about you who want to be there for you. I want to encourage you, if you're not in a circle tonight, to get into a circle. Get into a circle. I want to explain how you can get in a circle in a little bit, but I want to encourage you to get in a circle. 
But Acts chapter 2, verse 42, I'm going to mainly focus on this verse tonight. Verse 42, this is what it says. You can read 42 through 47 when you go home. But I want to talk about verse 42 tonight. All right? Verse 42, it says, they devoted. Can y'all say devoted? Devoted. Y'all say it louder. Devoted. Devoted. When you think of someone being devoted, you think someone's all in? Yeah. When they say someone was devoted, when you say someone's devoted to the Panthers, you know they're devoted. Come on, somebody. Panthers, Super Bowl champions. Yeah. Super Bowl champions. Yeah. If Clemson can't do it, Panthers can't? Are the Clemson people mad at me? No. Okay, here we go. Ready? They devoted. They were all in. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to the word of God, to the authority of God. They devoted themselves to the word of God that is so necessary in our lives in the church. And to the fellowship and to the breaking of bread. Amen. Got to have that food, right? It's not talking about food. We're talking about Lord Supper. Some of you are like, man, bread. Mm. And to pray. Four marks of a true church. Write this down. They have a high priority when it comes to God's word. A high priority when it comes to prayer. A high priority when it comes to fellowship. And a high priority of the Lord's Supper. Four marks of of a true church, if you want to see a healthy church, they understand the urgency, the importance of those four things. God's word, prayer, the Lord's supper, and fellowship. See, they just didn't have fellowship. They devoted themselves to fellowship. Some of y'all aren't necessarily devoted to fellowship. I don't mean just eating together. I mean, you're devoted to fellowship. You're devoted to a circle. See, if you were to tell them back in the day in Acts 2, 42, they devoted themselves to fellowship. Hey, they devoted themselves to coming to church once a week. They would have said, you're crazy. That's not devotion to fellowship. If you would have said, hey, they were devoted. They came to a live once a week. They would have said, that's not fellowship. That's not doing life together. That's not getting in a circle. There's like, that's, that's staying in a row. They wouldn't have told you. They said, no, they were devoted to God's word. They were devoted to prayer. They were devoted to remembering what Jesus had done for them through the Lord's Supper. But they were devoted to fellowship. They were devoted to doing life together. Having fellowship. Not just light fellowship, but they made fellowship a priority. See, some of y'all... Like you love online church. I love online church too when I'm sick. But one of the main reasons why we can't count online church as church. Because it misses one of the four marks of a true church. And that's fellowship. You got God's word. You might have prayer. You might see him do the Lord's supper. But you don't see them fellowshipping together. So I'm like, I can do church at my house. But you can. If you're truly going to do church, if you're truly going to be the church, you have to have fellowship. There's a reason why they call it Acts, the book of Acts. You just don't sit and hear someone preach. You do life together. See, this is what fellowship's all about. It's partaking and sharing in the spiritual, physical, and emotional needs of each other. Do you in a circle of people, in a circle of friends, do you participate and share together in the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of each other? Are you in a group with people who you're committed to making sure that you are pushing each other to be all that you can be in Jesus? Because check this out. No one should ever walk with Jesus alone. No one should ever grieve alone. No one should ever rejoice alone. No one should ever go hungry alone. You are not meant to do life alone. You are meant to do life together. You are meant to do life in a circle. You need a circle. It is imperative to your spiritual growth. Today's a big day. You want to know why today's a big day? 
Because today is what? Today's a live day, of course. But today's what? National Signing Day. Today's National Signing Day. Let me ask you this question. Have you signed up to be in a discipleship group? Have you signed up? Have you devoted yourself not only to prayer, not only to God's word, not only for thanking God when your church participates in the Lord's Supper, remembering him, but are you committed to having fellowship with one another? Have you had your national signing day in your life? Are you a part of a circle? Do you say, you know what? I signed up. Like, man, it was national signing day for me. Because some of you, I love it when you're here on Wednesdays, but I really believe with all my heart, if you're truly going to grow like never before, that is going to be in a circle. As iron sharpens iron, one brother sharpens another. Two are better than one. Circles are greater than rows. Are you in a circle? I'm telling you guys, my life would not be the way it is if it wasn't for me being in a circle. Because how many of you think I had temptations? How many of you think I had struggles in my life? Let me ask you this. Can you have fellowship by yourself? You can't have fellowship by yourself. When you experience a temptation, you need somebody else to help you in your temptation and your struggle. When you hurt, you need someone to hurt with you and grieve with you. When you rejoice, you need someone to rejoice with you. You are not meant to do life alone. You need a circle. You need fellowship. You need each other. God did not just create you. He created each and every one of you in this room. You were meant to have fellowship together, to thrive in a relationship with Jesus together. You want to know where you find true accountability? You find it in community. Accountability is found in community. A lot of you might run away from a circle because you're like, nah, I don't want anybody holding me accountable. With what I'm tweeting, what I'm Snapchatting, nobody better call me out. But check this out. Some of you are on sports teams, and if you're on my, if you're on my team, when I was playing basketball back in the day, and you weren't playing defense correctly, you weren't getting back on defense, you wanna, you wanna bet I was gonna call you out. How many of you going to call someone out when they're on your team? Or are you just going to let them not play defense? No, you're going to call them out, right? Well, check this out. Why wouldn't you call someone out in a loving way, in a way that would honor God? Maybe that's through text message. Maybe that's pulling them aside. You can do it in a circle. But you can do that in a circle. You can hold each other accountable. Hey, you been reading God's Word in the morning? Nah, man, I've been sleeping. Like, sleep is so good. Like, I love sleep. That's when you're in your circle, you're able to say, no, 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 no. 15 minutes more of sleep is not important as spending 15 minutes with Jesus. Man, I want to encourage you to spend time with Jesus. I'm going to shoot you a text. You got a brother in Christ who says in a group who's open, man, I got struggles. I look at things that I'm not supposed to look at. Man, I need your help. You start getting real with people and you tell them your struggles, you're able to hold you accountable. But what happens is what we try to do, we try to struggle alone and we end up failing every single time because we weren't meant to do life alone. We need circles. We need attachment. The Bible, I could give you a million verses, says love one another, encourage one another, build one another up. Confess your sins to one another. Can you do the one another's without a circle? She's so like, yeah, I can. Like when I see him, like at church, and I'm standing, I can be like, hey, man, I love you. You're doing a great job. If you want to do the one another's in Scripture, if you want to love one another, if you want to encourage one another, that's going to happen in a circle. 
If you want to be an all-in disciple when it comes to Jesus. If you want to have a national signing day today. May I encourage you to be in a discipleship group? May I encourage you to be in one? We provide one for each and every one of you guys. Whether it's on Sunday morning, whether it's a time during the week, we will be flexible. But you need to do life together in a circle. If you're truly going to be all in, you got to be committed to the coach, Jesus. you got to be committed to the mission of making disciples, the playbook. And you got to be committed to your team, the church. Some of you are like, man, I'm committed to Jesus. I'm committed to his playbook, but are you committed to the team? Circles are greater than rooms. Imagine what would happen in your life if you got in a circle with a group of girls who are in the same grade as you, who y'all encourage each other daily. Guys, imagine what would happen if you got in a circle with a group of guys who loved you and cared about you, and you got with a leader who loves you. What would happen? Get in a circle. You can do it. Let's pray. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Maybe you're here tonight and you would say being in a circle is something that you know you need to do, but it's just hard for you to do. And you just want me to pray for you. If you could slip your hand up, slip right back down and pray for you. Maybe you're here tonight and you're like, I'm in a circle. I love Jesus. I've been in a circle. I've grown up in Fairview all my life. Like you're telling me something that I already know. Can I encourage you to open up more, to challenge each other more, to be all that you can be in Jesus? Maybe it's encouraging each other more to read God's word together. Maybe you need to be in more intense with texting each other and saying, have you read today? Maybe that means you just being more open in your circle. You keep holding things back in your circle. And may I encourage you to be more open with people in your circle so that you can grow even more. But maybe you're here tonight and you're trying to do life without Jesus and a guaranteed formula for failure is trying to do life without Jesus. Maybe here tonight you do not have a relationship with Jesus. You had no clue that there was someone who loves you enough to die on the cross for every single one of your wrongs, who offers forgiveness, who offers grace, who wants you to turn to him tonight, that he is full of love, he is full of compassion. Say, I don't have a relationship with Jesus. The most number one important thing that you can nail down tonight if you do not have a relationship with Jesus. So tonight, if you've got a relationship with Jesus, I just want to pray for you. So with heads bowed and eyes closed, if that's you, if you could slip your hand right up and slip it right back down, I just want to pray for you tonight. You say tonight, I do not have a relationship with Jesus. I just want to pray for you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Maybe here tonight, you're that one, you're that two. Maybe you're that one that just didn't have enough courage to just slip up your hand and slip it right back down. Maybe you're here tonight, you do not have a relationship with Jesus. I want to encourage you. I want to invite you into a relationship with Jesus. So if that's you, it's a prayer, prayer between you and God goes something just like this. God, tonight I give my life to you. I repent of my sins. I turn from my sins. I ask for your forgiveness. I ask you to change my life to make me a new creation in you. I believe that you are the Lord of my life. The Savior of my life. I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. 
rising from the grave. Thank you for loving me, for saving me tonight. And all these things I pray. Amen. Maybe here tonight, you made a decision to follow Jesus. I want to be standing in the back by the gray room. May I invite you to find me? Just let me know, hey, you made a decision to follow Jesus. I'm going to high five you. I'm going to hug you. I'm going to go crazy on the inside. I'm not going to ask you any creepy questions. Maybe you need someone to pray with. Leaders are all in this room. We're here to pray with you. Well, maybe you're here tonight. The most important ingredient, I believe, for you to be an all-in disciple of Jesus is for you to be in a discipleship group. So there are forms up here. Maybe tonight needs to be your national signing day. You need to go home with your mom or your dad. You want to say, Mom, Dad, I want to sign up for a discipleship group. I want to encourage you to come up here and grab one of these forms and take it home. And it's you saying, man, I'm committed to being in a discipleship group. How many of you are in one right now? There's people right now who are in one. But that's only about half of you. May I encourage the rest of you, maybe who aren't in a discipleship group, to be in one. But may I encourage you guys with this, with a lollipop. On here it says, if you hold it horizontal, circles are greater than rows. I'm going to encourage you, don't eat it. No, you don't want to eat it. But I want you to take it with you. To put it somewhere in your room to remind yourself that circles, being in a discipleship group, is greater than being in rows. That's where you're truly going to do life together, where you're truly going to grow, is in a discipleship group. May I encourage you to take one of these in just a second during the invitation to come up here and grab one. Or maybe you're here tonight and you need to grab a discipleship group form. I want to encourage you to grab one. And in your live groups tonight, if you're wondering what are all the groups that are offered, you're going to get a flyer of all the groups that are offered. And I want you to be able to choose one. Maybe you know a friend who's in one. And you say, hey, friend, can I come with you to your discipleship group? And your friend is going to say, yes, I will pick you up. I will take you. I will take you breakfast. You're getting a little crazy. But I really believe, guys, as simple as it might seem, you need to be in a circle. If you're in a circle, open up more. Share life even more together. But may I invite you to however the Lord is leading you, whatever decision he's leading you to make, to make that decision. I'm going to be standing by the gray room. I invite the rest of you to come up, to grab a lollipop, grab a form if you don't already have one, okay? But let's sing together.
hope and pray that some of you tonight who aren't in a discipleship group will get in a circle. Tonight you're going to have an opportunity to meet some of those discipleship group leaders who love you and care about you because a lot of them are alive group leaders also. 